band. Okay, so let me. Hi, everyone. Yeah, thank you for joining today's event. And uh, yeah, so today uh, I will be talking about uh, the NUI. And uh, to be honest with you, I, um, I'm still studying this. And what I find out the interesting part for NUI is that NUI is really different from GUI, which is graphical uh, user interface. And uh, I find out this is similar to gamification before. I, I study a little bit uh, gamification and I find out uh, pretty much all the VR, AR, MR is recited on uh, game, right? Gamification, right? And then NUI is kind of like, you know, the interface, how people interact in the VR, AR, MR space. It's pretty much use natural user interface. So yeah, so I love to learn and share with everyone what I, well, what I got. Okay. So a little bit about me, I've been working on UX, UI digital products for more than 10 years. The most challenging project that I've done is a Starshine Space AR iOS app. Pretty much I self-taught AR Unity development and start from scratch. I develop an um, um, space AR iOS app and launch to the iOS store on my own within six months. So that is the most challenging project for me. And the fun project, I got selected as one of the NASA social media influencers and I joined one of the NASA campaign launch. So I did some web AR projects for their uh, launch campaign. Um, my goal in five years, I want to grow XR community and I want to inspire people every day. So what you will learn in this event um, are what is GUI, what is NUI and attributes of a NUI. Okay, so what is graphic uh, user interface, GUI? Uh, so if you can see the uh, right hand side, you can see the first uh, when computer uh, just invented, right, was invented. Uh, the first one is called CLI, which using, you know, like DOS or, you know, like code and command, right? There's no graphical interface, pretty much everything you need to code, um, you know, every command you need to code. So that's the first one. And the second one is the majority of the interface that we are using, like UX UI, um, whatever, you know, like, um, people are talking about our GUI, right? It's, it's mentor and ex explanatory, which means that, for example, if you want to accomplish something, right? And you need to hire or, you know, you need to work on a digital product and which called application, right? And that application will have a lot of such something like icons, cursors, text, button, visual language, windows, menus, right? Those stuff um, composed that are the elements and start making an app and there's a structure. You need to learn that structure so you can, you know, so you, inter you can interact with it, right? For example, Windows, you need to know the hierarchy of each part and you need to know, oh, when you click the logo, you go back to homepage. When you click the hamburger, you go to menu, right? All those stuff need to be taught, right? That you need to learn it in order to uh, do it. Sometimes bad GUI, you might get a dead end and you cannot get out, right? So GUI is more like that, something that uh, in between your goal, right? Yourself and your goal, right? That app will help you, right? Direct you to achieve the goal. And NUI is more direct and intuitive, which later on we will talk more about that. It means that um, the, the ideal GUI, uh, NUI is that the content is the interface itself. For example, when I talk to you and those stuff becomes an interface and do its own thing. Uh, there's no middleman or like medias between me or my content and the you know, final execution. So that's anyway. Okay. So uh, some um, uh, examples of GUI or some little elements, for example, like checkbox, drop down, uh, toggles, day and time pickers, search fields, navigation bars, progress bar, tool tips. So all those are included in GUI, right? So when you are working on stuff, even though like we've already get used to it, but imagine if a monkey, right? Want to, want, want to do something online or want to buy a clothes online or something. If a monkey want to eat something online, right? 
he needs to learn how to hold a mouse. He needs to learn how to type, right? So all this pri uh, prior knowledge that a monkey needs to learn, right? So, uh, so those are GUI, right? Okay, so what is NUI? With NUI, computer devices will adapt to our needs and preference for the first time and humans will begin to use technology in whatever way is the most comfortable and natural for us by Bill Gates. Okay, so what is natural, right? It is not exact uh, gesture, touch, voice command that makes, um, you know, that make any wife interface. It is the way that we interact with content naturally in our environment. Okay, so let's take a look. So I'm Bill Buxton and from Microsoft Research and I just want to talk a little bit about natural user interface. And the main thing I want to talk about is what's the natural in natural user interface? What's it all about? So we've seen Natal, all this gesturing. It's kind of cool. But the first message here is it's not about the technology, it's about the human doing the gesturing. And if it's going to be natural, we have to understand that it's got really a lot to do with very, very fine detailed skills. So let's bring it back to something to really understand writing, or we think we understand. So pretend I'm writing, I'm just, uh, not pretend, I've just finished writing my notes for a thing for Craig Mundy, and, and I'm finished. So here they are, it's on this eight and a half by 11 sheet, all nicely lined out, terrible handwriting, but we think we understand what I wrote, but this isn't what I wrote. So I have a friend, Yves Guillard, and he did this study, and I'm, this is a replication of what he did. Carbon paper on the bottom of the writing surface with a sheet of paper here. And so that is actually what the carbon paper said I wrote. And what you'll notice when you compare the two, this is way smaller, it's narrower, and it's rotated. Now what this clearly shows is that while I was writing, I was manipulating the paper, rotating it, and sliding it left and right as well as up and down. So that the zone of comfort for writing is much, much smaller on the surface of writing, even though I've got this larger desk um, cover that it was perfectly available to me. And this is, works all the time. What this says is the gods in the detail, understanding that writing is a bimanual action that requires this coordinated skill of the two hands using different functions, touch and stylus, if you will, gives us a whole different insight on how we write with a pen. And on any endeavor that we set out from writing or things much more complicated where we want to support natural user interface, we have to understand the activity, the intent, and the human capacity at this level, whether that capacity is at the motor sensory level, at the cognitive level, or at the social level. Now, I want to talk about this in a few other devices, how this reflects and can reflect into how we interact with using devices. So let's pretend um, a camera is a mobile uh, device. Well, it is, of course. It's a digital computer. It happens to have light in and pixels out. And notice when I navigate over this document, I can zoom in and out. I can pan left and right and come down and, and examine any part of the document. Everybody knows that. But the other part is I'm looking out and got my eyes closed, and I can still go to the top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left part of the document without looking. That's kind of interesting. So let's contra contrast that with how we navigate on digital documents. So my colleague Michelle Pau is going to come in and give me a couple of the devices here. There we go. Now here we have two um, devices. This is your standard PDA or, or phone where I have in this case a landscape. You know we're up in the Columbia River and I can pan around and I can zoom and so on using touch and this is, seems to be like a pretty cool fancy modern way to do things. But I want you to notice I can't go back to a certain part of that photograph without looking. I can't zoom and pan at the same time, which I could do in the camera. So in this case, um, you notice I, I move around on the display and navigate the photograph in the same way in this virtual landscape as I did with my digital camera. But I, the fact that I can zoom and pan simultaneously using one hand actually is very, very different than in in the traditional way where we do it with two hands, where I, I use the, the pan, I have to hold the phone with one hand and do the pan and zoom with the other hand. I, I have motor memory, I don't have motor memory, I can zoom and pan simultaneously. Now, 
that's fine and dandy if I'm doing a virtual photograph like a panorama. But now, what if Michelle brings me a document? So now, instead of a virtual scene, I can come into this web page, and now all of a sudden I can start to read by going left and right, up and down, and navigate that way. And so all of a sudden, what's kind of interesting is I can get around the document in and out and so on with one hand, but now I can potentially come in and touch and do something with my other hand is free. And we're going to demonstrate that now with, with yet another device. So what's interesting here is that the, I've got the menu over top of the map, so you notice like the crosshairs in a gun, I move it around. So now I can come down to a spot and I can just push the flag, and you notice I laid the flag down. And I can do other things here too. Now watch this. I can hit my annotation button here, and now I can do something because I want to tell you how to get over to, to my office. So I'm going to hit the record button. And I'm going to say something like, okay, this is the building where you're at right now. And if you come out here on the 148th and just drive down here and then turn left, you can sort of park right in there. And this is where you want to go. And um, the main thing is just don't come into here around building 122. That's not where you want to be. Now, Watch. I'm going to say something like, okay, this is the building where you're at right now. And if you come out here on the 148 and just drive down here and then turn left, you can sort of park right in there. And this is where you want to go. And um, the main thing is just don't. Okay, now the main thing here is what I want to. The, the key point here is, is that what am I capable of doing? I'm capable of zooming, panning, marking, and speaking all at the same time. This device is capable of capturing all of that. And now all that says that natural UI is that I can now send that to your phone to instruct you how to come. And so it's a whole new type of layering up these multimodalities. It's not about any one of these, speech, gesture, maps, and so on, being natural. It's how they're used together in context for an intent. Now, here's the, here's the most important part. Sure, that helps us communicate between my laptop or my phone and, and your laptop or your phone. But now think of it this way. At the same time, I'm going to CC your car so that the message that I sent here goes to your car navigation system and the natural language understanding parses what I said in the context of the map, which it recognizes and registers with the maps in its database, and then it segments my speech, and then the map, the route I drew, drives the map instead of the algorithms that your navigation system would have given otherwise, and it puts my voice to direct you how to get there. And furthermore, if I left something out, it'll substitute the, the robot voice in the thing to, to flesh out the, the instructions. The point here is that all of a sudden you now see it's not about the speech, it's not about gesture, it's not even about the phone, and it's not even about human-human communication. It's about also this to other devices, the Society of Appliances, the phone to the car, and then the car being able to deliver in the most natural way for the purpose while you're driving how to get where, where you're going, and combining it as the intermediary in the human-human communication. And this Society of Appliances and how these things work together in a natural, seamless way that reduces complexity for the users through the engineers taking on the complexity of how to build these things. That's what we're about. And getting these things right opens up a whole other dimension of how we have technology integrated into our lives. It involves all these hot topics like sensor networks, ambient intelligence, and yes, actually getting on with our lives without technology intruding, but rather being transparent and enhancing our lifestyle and our quality of life. Okay, so in this uh, video, we understand that it's not about a specific professional term called gesture control, touch control, voice command. Those makes, uh, you know, those make any UI interface. It is the way that we interact uh, with the content or we interact with uh, the environment naturally in, you know, in the place that we reside. Okay, so uh, content equals interface. So uh, the a really interesting way of describing uh, NUI is called content is the interface. So which means, for example, like uh, when you talk to Alexa, right? Hey, Alexa, what day is today, right? 
So you just say things, right? And that voice <clears throat> becomes the interface, interact with machine, interact with Alexa. Instead of right now, for example, if we need to see like what day is today, or you know, we need to understand like what's going on, or we need to make a comment to the machine, we need to go through some interface in order to make a comment. But right now, anyone is becoming like something called content is the interface. You say something, you produce something, or you make a comment, and things just happen. So the world moves with us. The surface is no longer the limit. While we once move across the screens, we now move through it. And the world moves with us. Similar to, uh, you know, in Minority Report, Tom Cruise is moving around. I know like, um, I, I listened to some, um, some events and one of the uh, designers said that what Tom Cruise doing is too tiring, too tedious. It's like, you don't need to, you know, make that big move, right? You probably only need to do a small gestures. If, imagine if someone needs to do, you know, a lot of um, researching or, you know, do a lot of typing and, you know, it's kind of like a full body in, uh, exercise, right? Actually the good, uh, anyway, you don't need to, you know, having too large gesture or, you know, exercise with your full body, like you are in a gym or something, but uh, it does uh, move uh, like using the natural way to move, to see different layers. Yeah, using like the, 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 the really natural gestures that you would do in uh, the environment. Okay, what's NUI? Uh, anyway, I mean, it's not exact, like for example, oh, if I have touch control, that is anyway. If I have voice comment, that's anyway. That is not. Is that the way that we interact with the content using our natural way? So usually when we do touch, right? It's easy, right? If we want to learn more, we touch it, right? And then if we want something, we say it, right? If we want something, we think of it, we feel it, uh, we want it, we just think it, right? Or we move move our fingers, we, we do some gestures, right? Or we, we look at something. If we are interested in uh, something that we just stare at it and we want to see more information about it. And brain machine interface is that whatever I think and then things will happen, right? So. Something similar to this, um, to like uh, in Fuller's, one of the quote that I really like, it's called to do more and more with less and less until eventually you can do everything with nothing, right? So this quote um, reminds me of this picture. This is in Matrix, right? And uh, um, you see like, uh, maybe we are the, battery right and uh, uh you know like and the world is just a simulation right and then we are probably the power the battery and uh, consuming all the illusions or all the simulation we have and power up this big matrix so you see like maybe in the future i i saw a meme on elon musk's uh, twitter he says that eventually Tesla will be nothing, right? It's similar to this, the, the, this one, like the interface will be gone, right? So similar to <clears throat> what Fuller said that, you see, uh, we can do more and more with less and less. Think about the technology today and the technology like 200 years ago, right? Right now we use smaller and smaller device, yet, um, I remember that the, there was a saying that, you know, the, the, uh, the rocket or, you know, the, the rocket, um, the spaceship that sent the, you know, astronaut to the moon is like our iPhone is much powerful than the spaceship that sent to the sent Armstrong and all those two or three astronauts to, uh, to the moon is much powerful. Our 
iPhone is much powerful than uh, the spaceship of few decades ago, right? Same astronauts to the moon. So you see like our iPhone is really small and you see that spaceship is giant, right? But our iPhone is much powerful than the spaceship decades ago, which is extremely amazing. So, which means that maybe in the future we can just think, right? The world is inside our head, right? Um, we can think and uh, things will come true, right? So do more and more with less and less until eventually you can do everything with nothing. Okay, so anyway, one of the attributes for anyone is that it enhances existing capabilities. For example, it finds out something that we already use it and we kind of enhance that capability. For example, like iPhone, you need to touch the screen, right? Uh, in order to get information. But what if your fingertips, the fingertips is on your finger, right? Um, you, you, you can unlock your phone or unlock a lot of uh, different functions through your finger, finger um, fingerprint, right? So. It's kind of like you are already doing something, but by doing extra stuff, you can, you know, it makes life easier. You don't need to remember the password. You don't need to, you know, uh, figure out like, oh, the combination, I'm not a robot, right? Yeah, and putting a lot of like, oh, look at what, uh, look at those pictures. What are the traffic lights? Please select. I feel like, oh, those are so annoying. I'm not a robot, right? But by placing your fingers. Of course, you are not a robot, right? Um, yeah, and then you see like um, moving your head, like face ID, you've already looking at the screen, right? If there's another, you know, function that using your face, that would be great because when you are using your iPhone, you already looking at the screen. And then if you want to unlock something, you see, like I am myself, sometimes I feel frustrated. I am this person. Why I have to uh, type something to prove that I am myself, right? So um, I think this is very interesting. So you see, you've already looked at the phone. So while scanning your face, right? It's kind of like you don't need to do extra stuff and the stuff just unlock or your payment unlock or your phone unlock. It's, it's like a natural way of doing things. Okay, so, and uh, it's also easy to learn, easy for novices to learn and uh, allows, um, you know, beginners to become instant experts. And it also provides a lot of ways for the experts to skip a lot of easy steps so they can, you know, just directly go to the advanced level. So let's take a look of Microsoft HoloLens. Modern businesses need to constantly innovate, recalibrate, and optimize to stay competitive. Dynamics 365 Guides uses mixed reality to help workers adapt to complex scenarios in daily operations, from training, to assembly, to service and repair. Step-by-step -step instructions are easily written on PC, and then holographic parts and icons are simply picked up and placed on the machine where the work happens. Novice and experienced employees can both learn and adapt quickly while doing their tasks. The instructions move with the employees, pointing them to the tools and parts they need, showing them exactly where they need to apply them. And with easy to author branching, managers can account for all the variables and changing conditions of their operation, allowing employees to get up to speed faster, follow the right procedures with fewer errors, and more confidence. Managers can also leverage guides insights to combine the data generated from doing the work with transactional data, driving optimizations and continuous improvement faster than ever before. All of this is connected to the cloud, so instructions are always up to date, allowing your employees and your business to adapt at the speed of change. Yeah, in the video, we can see that it allows novels to learn things quickly without, you know, without um, being confused because everything is right in front of your eyes, right? So it's like really direct and you can, you know, you can do use gesture control and in a natural environment way, right? 
and interact with the machine. So it's very easy and intuitive for novels to learn. And also it's action, reaction, correlation. So pretty much uh, you physically interact with the interface, use the natural way. And then um, the NUI must imit uh, imitate the exact same reactions from the physical environment if you interact with it. So let's take a look of Samsung AR Glass. Yeah, so yeah, so through these videos, we, we can see that Samsung AR Glass allows the user to interact uh, with the interface using the most natural. For example, you see like inside uh, the, the guy pretty much, you know, put his hands from uh, his chest to his head, which means enlarge, right? And then this is a natural way if you want to, you know, make something bigger, right? The, every gesture is really natural if you want to, you know, uh, work on something. So this is considered to be, you know, action, reaction, correlation. So uh, pretty much very intuitive and easy to learn. Virtual reality. Uh, VR offers users to use their gestures to interact with the virtual world and translate human movements into uh, more like a um, kind of like VR mimicking uh, the way that we interact with the projects. So let's take a look of the examples um, that uh, VR and AU, NUI cases. So you can see in the video, the guy was pulling out a bunch of marbles, right? And then he was trying to grab it and pull all those marbles outside, right? And he was, you know, stirring all those, you know, I don't know, purse or balls or marbles, right? And the way that he was working on it is similar to the way that we interact the actual object in real world. Yes, so this is kind of like the, the way that uh, natural, user, na uh, natural user interface provide. Pretty much you do, you, you, you have the same behaviors as uh, when you interact in the real environment. Okay. So let's take a look of another example. It's called a VR spacewalk. It allows the user to mimic how an astronaut interact with the real space. Pressure down to 0 0.35 bars, falling to 0 0.2. EV1 moving towards the Quest airlock. Alec approaching vacuum. Prepare to move Canada Arm into position. Canada Arm in motion. 
PV2, we're one minute from egress. Time for last checks. Take a look at your gloves for us. Make sure there are no tears. This is in VR space, so... Okay. Houston has visual right. contact on the helmet cam. Your heart rate and oxygen levels are on your chest if you want to check, EV2. Readings look fine down here. Come on out, buddy. Water's great. Okay. Test run. Let's see you secure your tether. Grab hold of that clip. Fix it onto the yellow handrail. Squeeze the trigger to get a hold. Okay, that's great, EV2. Space Station Command, Houston here. We are ready to open the airlock. Copy that, Houston. Airlock hatch is opening. EV2, your toolbox is attached to your waist belt. We are ready for you to move outside. Space is just through that hatch and grab hold of the yellow handle. Pull yourself up. Give us a wave, EV2. We're all looking up at you. Six years of training was worth it for this, right? Take it nice and easy. We want to keep your heart rate steady. Anything under 80 beats per minute is great. EV2, readings down here are optimal. This is going to be a walk in the park for you. It's okay. My heart rate was going nuts the first time. Yeah, so you can pretty much see that. Um... Hey, newbie. Great you could join me. Let me pull down those shades for you. So, yeah, is... need a bit of sunblock up here. I'm sticking with you till we get to the arm. We figured you might need some company for the first section. We're headed just over this way. Reach out in front of you and grab those yellow railings. Remember, pull the trigger on the hand controls to grip and pull yourself forward. Take some practice. Reach up to the handle on your right. Don't worry, it'll all get a lot easier on the arm. Yeah, so it mimics uh, the astronaut. Here she is. We're gonna let the crane take the strain. Wouldn't want to drag yourself all the way over on your own, right? EV2, EV1 will snap you into the foot restraint once you're in place. Head towards the T-bar and grab on. So by step, like each steps, you learn more about, uh, you know, how astronauts uh, do the spacewalk. Okay, you're strapped in and ready to go. The camera's in the toolbox on your tether. It's a point and shoot. Nice and easy. EV1, let us know when you're clear. Give me five seconds and I'm out of the picture. Enjoy the ride, cowboy. Any problems, just holler and I'll be over in about 45 minutes. Station, Houston here. You are go to start Canada arm motion. Motion commencing. It was my call on the soundtrack. If you're more into the sound of silence, just tap the panel on your left arm to turn it off. I won't yeah. get offended. Oh, tap it again to turn it back on. Yeah, so pretty much in space, there's no sound because there's no air. But uh, you see like in the helmet, you can listen to, you know, thumb music. So yeah, so in this VR spacewalk, pretty much it mimics how astronauts you know, do the spacewalk outside of Earth. Okay, thank you so much for joining uh, today's meetup. And uh, yeah, so um, I just launched one course called Gamification 101 Intro. It's in xreality.teachable.com. Yeah, so right now we have discount as long as you put to the promo code XRealty Academy 2021. Uh, yeah, you got 50% off. Yeah, so that's the, the course that I just launched. And then um, if you really like to get more involved with the, um, you know, XR, AR, VR, MR, or some technology, uh, future technology, welcome. Yeah, please join our meetup and uh, yeah, take a look and join our Discord or subscribe our newsletter. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, feel free to contact me or uh, follow my social medias. Thanks. Any questions right now? Uh, 
anyone has any questions you wanna discuss or bring bring up? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to 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 let me know or put on the chat. Cool. Okay, so yeah, I mean it seems like um we, we, we um, everyone understand uh, the NEY interface. So really appreciate everyone like join the, thank you for your time, join today's uh, event and uh, I will see you next time. Okay, thank you, bye-bye.